Now, hello everybody. Um, I'm sitting here in Perth, Western Australia, as part of our Meet the Author Live series in WA, and I'm chatting with Brooke Davis. Now, you might remember Brooke, uh, whose book Lost and Found, and would you like to show us that book? Lost and Found has, uh, it was a debut fiction novel, and it, on release, probably raced up to the bestseller list very, very quickly and has won many, many awards and really has changed the life of Brooke. Hi Brooke, welcome to Better Reading Facebook. You can talk now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's a total joy for me. And sorry about the state of my book. It's, it's seen a few different countries, this one. <laughs> it has. <laughs> so you bought your favourite edition of the book, did I you? I did, and it's waterlogged and all kinds of things. Okay, so. well just hold it up for us again so we can see it. Natalie, we've got Natalie and he's just made a comment and said hello. So hi to hi, Natalie. Natalie. <laughs> now, if you are if you are watching, um, we are live. We're chatting with Brooke Davis. We're talking about her book Lost and Found. Uh, Lost and Found's been out for a little while now. However, it was debut fiction. It hit the bestseller list very quickly. It's won prizes, and we're chatting with Brooke about writing, about Lost and Found, and really about the challenges of writing a second novel. Okay, over to you, my dear. <laughs> Your That's turn. a good intro. <laughs> Did you. you like that? It was really good. Um, yeah, this book, I, it was published almost two and a half years ago now, which is, it just seems like I was a totally different person then. Um, but it, it That's a good point. How has writing and being published changed your life? Um, I mean, I think it's, it's shown me that you can actually make a living out of it, which really surprised me. I did not ever expect that to be able to happen. Um, and I, I just get to take it seriously, and I, which is just, I, again, I never thought that would happen. I thought it'd be something I'd always... Well, you've studied and worked hard, and you've yeah. studied the profession of writing. Yeah. You know everything about me, don't you? <laughs> I do a little bit of research. <laughs> I, ha I have, but I still didn't really believe it, and so I, I put up, I, I created a life that I would be really proud of if I didn't get published. I worked as a bookseller, I used to teach a bit of writing, and I was really happy with that life, and I, but I think that was kind of a bit of fear as well, in case I didn't, what if the thing I always wanted didn't happen, and, and when it did happen, I couldn't quite yeah, believe my luck. It was a big hit on release, wasn't it? That doesn't happen very often. Yeah, no, it doesn't. And working as a, as a bookseller, I, I definitely know that. So I, I kind of, I, I understood what was happening the whole way, which really, it kind of blew, blew my mind, really. And I, I yeah, and I, I mean, I, I think a lot of that was to do with um, my dad, who buys the book for every single person he knows, and my um, bookselling community, they don't let anyone leave shop without someone buying a copy of my That's book. That's right. So that helps. But it, the book has to be good. Sharon says hi and great Hi, book. Oh, hi thank you. Lyle Becker says read it, great book. Aww. Now uh, Ali said I started writing a novel in 1999. Tell me how to get over my writer's block. Well Ali stay tuned because we are going to get to that. Um, Zephy just said putting it on my reading list. And Anne, is it available in the bookstores? It's in a lot. I still see it around. So it's it absolutely be, available. I think, can, I think you can order it. Well. Right. So tell us a little bit about Lost and Found, and then we'll start talking about writing a second novel. Yeah, sure. So it, it didn't begin in a great place for me. My mum died about nine years ago in, in an accident. And I was kind of looking for a way to work through that and to express that. And it took me ages to start writing fiction again, but when I did, the first voice that came to me was that of a little girl, and she was seven, and her dad had just died. And, and she would become seven-year-old Millie Bird um, in my book. It makes, makes a lot of sense to me that I started writing from that point of view of a child, because I think you do get really childlike when you're grieving. Um, but yeah, so the, the book evolved to have Millie Bird, seven-year-old, and 82-year-old Agatha Panther, and 87-year-old Carl the Touch Typist. And they all live in this little town on the southwest coast of WA. And at the beginning of the book, um, Millie has just been abandoned in a department store by her mum. 
Uh, Agatha has not left her home in seven years since her husband died. And Carl has just escaped from his nursing home. And that's the point where all three characters meet and they go on a road trip across Australia together. And hilarity ensues. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the you've rest got of to it read ensues. it. <laughs> if you haven't read it, really, you're missing out. Can you hold it up for yes, us again? Sure. It's called Lost and Found. It's by Brooke Davis. I'm in Western Australia, Perth, and I'm chatting with Brooke live. So if you have any questions or comments, feed them through. Jess has just said, oh, this makes me so happy. Dana has just said another author I've discovered. Um, and Heather said, yes, it's also available at the public libraries. And it is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Brooke, um, it's been out for two and a half years. I know you're working part-time in a bookstore but you're also writing your second book. Talk to us about that. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. When you're writing this first one, I was really just doing it to see if I could do it, you know, and I, I didn't know if I could. And it was, it was tough, but it was also easy because no one cared. <laughs> and everyone thought it was a bit weird that you'd spend six years of your life writing something that may not ever see the light of day and and I was kind of fine with that position I knew my dad was waiting for it but that was the only person really who was waiting for it other than myself um so there was a real sense of freedom with that and now the second one it's, it's I feel like it's pretty awful complaining about it the fact that there are people waiting for it my publishers and agent and and my dad again <laughs> but but I, it's writing into that space where there's expectation. It creates a whole lot of noise in your head about who you're supposed to be writing for. Do I write for the people who liked this one? Do I write for the people who didn't like it and try and show them that they should like it? <laughs> or what do I do? And so I've had to work really hard on, on quieting those voices and, and trying to write from from my heart again and write from something that interests me. That's been a real struggle um, and I'm, s I'm still, still working on that but I am writing and that's and it is different and I'm really excited to get excited about it so that's a really good feeling. It's fantastic. It is really fantastic. And I think there are different styles of writing. There are some people that can, you know, write a book every year and that's because it's so far removed from their lives. They're writing straight fiction. But I think I think you're the kind of person, Brooke, that writes from the heart. Um, mm. And you get a sense of that when you read Lost and Found. Um, Lovely. Yeah. I get so jealous of those people who can knock out a book a year. Maybe. Yeah, well, it's a different kind of writing style. Um, now, Fiona McKenzie says, authentic. I love it. Uh, were you a writer before you were a novelist? I'm not really quite sure about that question. Can you answer that? Oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't really... No, because I, I guess the way I can answer that is that I don't, I don't see myself as a novelist because I've only written one. <laughs> yeah. Seems a bit fake to call myself a novelist, um, and I don't want to be known as one. I do want to, I want to write everything. I've, I went to and did writing at university and wrote scripts and plays and. Um, kids books and all kinds of things and I wanted, I don't know if that's um, selfish or silly but I, I want to do it all. I want to write films, I want to write um, all the stuff that yeah. should be written. <laughs> but that's it, I think once a writer always a writer. Yeah, I hope, I hope There's nothing so. wrong with that. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, and I think, you're, you know, there has been comments to say that, you know, our readers, the better reading readers, are feeling that you're authentic. And that's what I think of you. I think you're very authentic. I think your writing rings of that. And I think that you can't be anything but that. And that's just the way it is. That's lovely. I think that's a real... How do you say that? I think that's a real lesson I learned after my mum died. That I think that was a huge shift in my writing. I can actually document that, I think. I think before then, I was really just, and that's an important part of your apprenticeship, I think I was really just trying to copy all my favourite writers and trying to write um, bigger than me. And as soon as mom died, I realised that good writing is honest writing and that's, and that's all I wanted to do was, was write. But this is very much fiction, but it, it comes from such a place of emotional truth for me. 
even just not necessarily inside of me, but everyone I know, um, and that was a really big and important lesson for me in my yeah. writing. I get a great sense of that. You know, ever since I met you, I, I felt that. And I think our better reading readers are feeling that right now. Tina's just said, can't wait to read it. Lisa, she said, without a doubt, one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. <laughs> well, there you go. I mean, the power of the story. Yeah, it, it's incredible, isn't it? It's so important. And and that's why uh, we need to keep funding the arts well so that we can we create do. these, um, can keep story a, a part of Australian culture, you know, yeah. and not have to go elsewhere to, to hear our own stories. And it's very important. Yeah, it is really, really important. Okay, and tell me, what is it like to work in a bookshop? Oh, only the best job in the whole world. <laughs> so I worked in different ones um, since. I was, let's just say, 15 years. Don't need yeah. to say since I was. <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about no, age. No, yeah. Um, no, no. But we, I, so I'm from Torquay in Victoria. I worked in a bookshop there, and I worked in a bookshop in Canada, and also here in Perth. And um, it's 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 given me a lot of insight into the way the industry works, which has been really helpful with writing. But it also gives me this beautiful, balanced life where I, I guess we should. I'm just writing all the time in my stupid pajamas in my room. <laughs> I and I don't talk to anyone. I, I go completely nuts, as you can imagine. If we, um, but having that that job to go to, the AD structure, but it gives you a chance to talk to human beings about things that you love talking about. Yeah. It's it's the perfect marriage, isn't it? It really is, and I, I sometimes can't believe my life. Yeah. And I, I never get up and go, oh man, I gotta go to work. Yeah. Every day I'm like, yeah, I can go yeah. To work. <laughs> We're lucky to be doing something we love. Isn't I feel the same way. Totally, and yes, I yeah. can't believe your life. Don't get me started on that. <laughs> right. Don't make me laugh because the camera starts shaking. <laughs> Bev says, do you write fiction from the 18th or 19th century? Oh, I don't. I don't think I could do that. I, I um, I'm not great with with research. I love because it's coming from the heart. Yeah, and I'm, I like. I probably one of my biggest influences is someone like Roald Dahl, who I, I love his imagination, and that's kind of what I'm interested in. Um, I'm not. I don't think I'm smart enough to get facts right, so I don't think Well, I think that's rubbish, but this is just your style of writing. Now, Dana is back again, and she said, this sounds like it would provide plenty of conversation for book clubs. And that's that's absolutely right, Dana. And she says, also says, I love these interviews. I feel a real connection with the authors, and it inspires me to read their books. Thank so you for organising that. Oh, now, listen, before we go, show me your book one more time. If you haven't read it, read it, Lost and Found by Brooke Davis. That's who we've been chatting with tonight. She's very lovely, she's very authentic and she's very hardworking and she's writing her second book. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you for having me. Enjoy.